Good Monday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik and station scientist as well. We're looking again at some quiet conditions tonight and much better for doing some stargazing. We'll talk about what you can see coming up here in just a little bit. If you'd like to ask me questions, suggest what we can put on here, email address right here at the bottom of the screen that I'm in at this point in time right here. Beneath me in that screen where it looks like a waterfall display going on, that is livemeteors.com. That right there is able to give you the sound of meteors smacking into the atmosphere. Occasionally you may see a bright light dropping on down the screen in the middle. The one well on over toward the, let's see if I'm pointing the right direction here, the right hand side, that's just constant static. Likewise for that waterfall display right there. Right Right in between these, right about there, down toward the bottom of the screen, if you see a bright light every once in a while, and go to LiveMeteors.com and watch the display, you may see, again, right, there's one right there, that white light dropping on down there. That was a meteor that just hit the Earth's atmosphere and disintegrated. It left behind a trail of ionized gas, and the radar echoes, the energy going out from the radar dish and bouncing back to it, bounced off it. There's another one right there that just happened just a second or two ago. These Meteors come and go. We're at the tail end of the Lyrid meteor shower, so you may see a lot of activity uh, in that location. So keep an ear to that, especially when we have meteor showers that are blocked out by the cloud cover out there. That might not be such a bad website to keep around because then you can listen to the meteor showers, something you don't usually often think about doing or hear people talk about. Other things to take a look at, social media down toward the lower blue bar at the bottom of the screen, red bar giving you the daylight information, uh, moonrise, moonset, things like that. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and get started and show you what we've got going on with that from timeanddate.com, a view of what we're seeing out there. The moon is a waning crescent. It'll be, uh, it's about 3.1% left to go. It'll be rising late tonight into early tomorrow morning, right before dawn patrol. So you're probably not going to be seeing too much out of that. And again, more of the information available in the red bar at the bottom of your screen. Let's see what else is going on out there and how we're doing for seasons, at least where it comes to changing over. We're right in the middle of springtime. And as of right now, we could see again the possibility of some warmer weather ahead. That'll be definitely be the case. But the next one up is going to be the summer solstice, which is going to be taking place in about 57 days, 4 hours, 13 minutes. This according to archaeoastronomy.com, taking a look at how ancient cultures used the sun, the moon, the stars to plan ahead for what was going on when it came to seasonal planting, when it came to harvesting, things like that. Really incredible to take a look at what our ancestors managed to come up with to keep track of stuff like that. Nowadays, all done by computer, but really kind of neat to see nonetheless. So if you'd like to see more about this, go to archaeoastronomy.com to find out how much time is left in the seasons out there. 23 degrees, the high temperature on Mars. That was set just about uh, four days ago, so that would have been on about Friday or so. And also, again, looking at a uh, temperature of 101 degrees below zero from the remote and monitoring station on the Curiosity rover, which is still going out there. Got a low temperature on Friday of 101 degrees below zero and a high of only 23. It can get pretty chilly on Mars, but actually that air temperature was decently warm for this time of the year. 48 the ground temperature, minus 135 degrees for a low temperature on the ground. If you'd like to see more of this and find out more about what's going on, go to the Mars Science Laboratory on board the Curiosity rover and look at the remote environmental monitoring station. Uh, tons of great information information available here, including the cameras, the radiation detectors, all that available. And it's all, again, at mars.nasa.gov. So a great opportunity to see more there. We are seeing, again, the possibility of a lot less clouds than what we have seen across the area over the last couple of days. So things are looking much clearer for tonight. We do have, again, some clouds out there drifting on through as sunset approaches. The view from the Cotton Exchange camera in downtown Memphis on our Weatherbug camera shows a few of those high, thin clouds drifting on through from the west, but hopefully nothing that's going to interfere with your stargazing purposes for tonight. No major solar storms in progress. Things are decently quiet on the overview. We're not seeing anything in the way of a major amount of activity, some medium thunder. Uh, storms from the sun as we went through yesterday afternoon of about a G2 to G1 scale. So a little bit of interference, but not much beyond that. And chances of anything of us involving uh, seeing the aurora this far south uh, doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. It looks to be uh, decently quiet for much of the United States, so not going to be seeing too much there. Sun, again, is a waning crescent, just less than 5% illuminated, and it will be uh, rising again tomorrow right before sunrise. 
new moon will be getting into here as we get into uh, tomorrow at about 6.17 in the morning. Sun for today is almost gone. You can see sunset clearing out behind me at this time, so not doing too bad. As we go into tonight, cloud cover may be sticking around a little bit, but we should begin to see the possibility of some more clouds drifting on through as we go into tomorrow. But the threat of heavy cloud cover out there tonight does not look like it is going to be a major concern, so definitely good news uh, where it comes to stargazing out there. And when you're stargazing, remember to get away from the city lights as much as possible. You can see that Memphis being a large metropolitan area, this map from cleardarksky.com showing nearly impossible viewing conditions anywhere in the metro area almost. So you need to be far enough away to get a good clear view of either meteors or faint stars. Getting the telescope out there, even if you're in Midtown, is not going to help because you're just going to need something to overcome all that pollutants and all that light out there. So keep that in mind. More information available on the Memphis light pollution map. That's at cleardarksky.com for more. Nothing showing up in the way of fireballs. We do not have anything showing up uh, at this time from the American Meteors Society at amsmeteors.org if you'd like to see more about what has gone on out there. Latest one for us has been several days uh, beforehand. Actually on Friday we did a guess uh, from what it looks like we got one report of a meteor being seen Let's see if it was anywhere around this area. Again, amsmeteors.org is where you want to go to uh, to find out more information. This particular one report looks like it came from in and around the area of Sergoinville. Christian Bend looks like uh, up in the northeastern parts of Tennessee, up around the Kingsport area, east of Johnson City. It looks like somebody spotted something out there, but it doesn't say exactly uh, which direction or where it went to, so it may have just been a meteor. If you'd like to know more, just click on Report a Fireball and tell everybody about it and see if anybody else saw what you saw out there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on for tonight. The International Space Station will not be visible. It's just not going to be in the uh, right position out there for us to take a look at. It is passing by uh, Mexico right now, just off the Baja Peninsula and heading on down toward the the central part of South America going to be going uh, over the Andes, it looks like, relatively soon around Chile and down toward the area of uh, Argentina pretty soon. But right now, it's just not visible to us. It's just too bright out there for us to see too much of anything. Next best opportunity will be a very bright pass coming up in about a week from tomorrow on May the 2nd. So we might be able to see something at that location. Let's see what we have in the way of iridium flares for tonight. Nothing. Tomorrow morning at 4.53, there will be a very bright iridium flare taking place. It's just very close to the horizon just down below Cassiopeia in the north northeasterly skies at just about 454 in the morning. So if you'd like to see that again, the, the satellite will fade into view and then it'll be very bright and then it'll fade back out again all within maybe about 10 to 15 seconds. So you might be able to see an iridium flare that's tomorrow morning at about 454 or so. Let's take a look and see if there's anything going on out there for tonight. Again, we do have one bright piece of space junk out there. The Falcon 9 rocket booster has been uh, rising quite nicely in the western skies. It's going to be going right through Orion just about 9 o'clock tonight. So if you look to the western skies and see a fairly bright point of light coming up, that is, at that time frame, a piece of space junk, part of the SpaceX system that helps to get the uh, satellites into orbit. It's going to be going across Orion through Sirius, uh, the dog around Canis Major through Cancer, and eventually going right on in through about the constellation of Leo the Lion, going right through that kind of hook of stars that you see there. Uh, that, again, will be fading out. And if you take a look right around the area of Jupiter, which will be rising in the southeastern skies, you should see it fade just basically right around that area as that piece of space junk enters into Earth's shadow and you don't see it anymore. So again, that'll be a good opportunity to see that, and that will be happening. Uh, Falcon 9 rocket body at about 9 o'clock tonight in the west. Hopefully you don't have too much in the way of cloud cover out there. Very bright for later on this evening. The only other thing that's going to be fairly bright out there, we've got a couple of other targets which are pretty popular, including the OTV uh, so-called secret space plane. That'll be up at about 920, but the visibility at this time, that magnitude of 2.9, that is very very dim, so it's going to be doubtful that we really see too much of anything out of that. So the, your best hope for tonight will be that Falcon 9 
rocket body. That'll be at about 9 o'clock tonight in the western horizon. Let's skip ahead to tomorrow morning. This available again from heavensabove.com and this gives you an upper opportunity to see what's going on very early tomorrow morning. And again, visibilities at this time, the magnitude or brightness are going to be very low, 2.0 to about 3.0. And that's about the limit of being able to see anything out there. So doubtful we're going to be seeing too much of anything there. Let's skip ahead one more time and see what we have for tomorrow night. Again, there's our Falcon 9 rocket booster that'll be going over at about 921 tomorrow. Decently bright, but not as bright as the International Space Station could be. So we might be able to see some of that going on, but it doesn't look like a lot to be able to take a look at. Again, heavens-above.com is where you want to go to to take a look and see where all this stuff comes from. What are we seeing out there right now? Well, as of right now, at the time I record this, it's about 7.20 or so. Sun is just going down. Uh, below the horizon. If it were bright enough tonight, as the sun goes down, you might be able to see Mars in Taurus, the constellation of Taurus, so it's possible you might be able to see that, but you're going to need a telescope at this point in time. Jupiter is now just rising in the southeastern sky, so you should be able to see that uh, pretty easily as the sky begins to dim. Let's take it ahead a couple hours. Let's go to about uh, 10.20 this evening and see what else we have out there. As we get into the early evening hours, Jupiter will be rising high in the sky, and Sirius will be setting down toward the southwestern horizon, one of the brightest objects in the sky besides the International Space Station and the planet Venus. So you'll be able to see that, and of course Jupiter as well, Jupiter in Virgo, but otherwise no major planets are being seen at this time, and hopefully again decently clear. Skip ahead again a little bit more to around, say, early tomorrow morning for those of you who are going to be going to work and maybe going to third shift duties, things like that. Uh, Jupiter up there. Saturn will be in the southeast sky, but you're probably going to need a telescope uh, to be able to see that. That'll be rising with uh, Ophiuchus, hope I'm saying that correctly, the uh, snake bearer, the constellation of Scorpius, bright with Antares, rising in the southeastern skies as well. So that should be a nice little view uh, to be able to see there. Again, the space station at this time, just not really going to be an option for being able to see that. So try again later. We'll keep you updated on that as we go throughout the next uh, several days. More on my forecast available through the weather section of wreg.com slash weather and you can get all the updates on what's going on uh, with what's passing over the Mid-South. Take a look at my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3 and also don't forget to drop by my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonic wreg3 as well. So a pretty quiet night tonight, not a lot going on but you should be able to see at least a few things out there so good news on that. And we'll be keeping our eyes open for anything else that happens. Congratulations to uh, Commander Peggy Whitson on board the space station. Got a call uh, from the President of the United States today congratulating her on her record-setting achievement of staying in orbit uh, the, uh, the, the most amount of time. If you'd like to see more about that, you can go to nasa.gov and find out more about what exactly the honor is all about and how long people can actually stay up there on the space station and how much we're trying to figure that out so we can give a little bit more warning to people who are going to be going on these very long missions. So something to think about on that if you want to check that out. Again, forecast information available and all kinds of other details on the social media down at the bottom section of the page on the blue bar. And again, livemeteors.com just below this section right here. If you'd like to see more about that, go to wreg.com slash weather and we'll have more about that. And of course, uh, Skyblog3 also being posted as well. So stay tuned for more there. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik on a rapidly fading, very beautiful Monday evening. We'll have more on the forecast coming up up tomorrow, so stay tuned for that on our weather blog called Weather Overtime, and stay tuned for more coming up with News Channel 3 on all things that matter on astronomy and science here on Skyblog 3. And whatever happens with anything involving science or astronomy, remember to keep looking up. Thanks for joining us.